Hey guys, Greg Knuckles here with StringTheory.com, back with uh, this installment of our semi-daily Q&A series. Uh, today's question is, what are the sleep requirements for a lifter, for an athlete? Um, is the typical recommendation of about seven to eight hours per night enough? Um, you know, what are the drawbacks of sleeping less than that? And uh, are there benefits to sleeping more than that? Or is that going to cause um, some drawbacks? That's an idea a lot of people have. So um, first off, just, just to say this on the outset, um, this is mainly applicable, well, this is primarily applicable to people who have normal genetics for sleep. Um, there are actually a few genes that regulate how much you need to sleep per night, and the vast, vast majority of people have the typical allele for those where uh, a normal night of sleep is about seven to eight and a half hours per night. Um, there are some people, a, a very small minority of people, like 5% of the population or fewer, um, that actually have a gene that lets them, for all intents and purposes, sleep faster. So they get as much out of a four to five hour night of sleep as the typical person would get out of an eight hour night of sleep. Um, I'm very jealous of those people. Uh, and that very well may include a lot of disproportionately successful people who report sleeping hardly any at all at night. Um, so those people are out there, but uh, I'm assuming most of the people I'm talking to, you don't fall into that category, and you can't train yourself to fall into that category. Um, sleeping less and less, you don't get good at getting by on less sleep. Um, you just feel really tired all the time. Oh, and one other thing to mention before we get into this. Um, if you are undersleeping, you're probably not the best judge of whether you're undersleeping or not. Um, there was a study done looking at mental performance with sleep deprivation. Uh, had people, if I'm remembering correctly, sleeping six hours per night. Um, and then, well, one group sleeping six hours per night, one group sleeping, I think, eight and a half hours per night, and then one group just pulling consecutive all-nighters. And um, the six-hour group, uh, they, when basically they ran them through mental tasks and looked to see what their performance actually was and then asked them, how much do you think your performance has declined? And they they said correctly that they thought their performance had declined after 24 hours. Then by 48 hours, if I'm remembering correctly, they said, yeah, I think I, I'm doing just as well as I did yesterday. You know, haven't gotten any worse, but not as good as a full night of sleep. And then same thing after three days of poor sleep. Uh, they, they thought that their performance was below baseline, but hadn't really declined anymore, when in reality, their performance had just declined linearly all three days. Um, so they didn't realize how sleep deprived they were. They thought that they had kind of plateaued after one night of bad sleep, when uh, actually, after three days of sleeping six hours per night, their mental performance was about the same as it would have been if they pulled an all-nighter. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's just a random aside before we actually get into the video. Okay, so first qu or the the main question, um, you know, are there benefits to sleeping more, and what are the drawbacks to sleeping less? Um, I'll address this the second part of that question first because that's what most of the research thus far uh, is kind of looking at. So there's a lot of research comparing sleeping a normal amount seven, eight and a half hours or so, to sleeping substantially less than that. So they typically use five and a half to six hours in those studies as the short sleeping group. And uh, I'll just sum all of that up very quickly. A bunch of bad shit happens and no good shit happens. Um, it Physical performance goes down, mental performance goes down, um, you just become crankier. That's, that's not a good thing. Um, if you're a fast sleeper and you can get by on that, that's great. For most of us, sleeping at least seven and a half, eight, eight and a half hours per night is going to be dramatically better than sleeping less than that, both in terms of just how you feel and then also probably how you'll respond to training and diet as well. There haven't been that many long-term studies uh, looking at this, partially because it's not incredibly ethical to, to make people sleep less for prolonged periods of time. I, hard to run RCTs on that because, um, 
like ethics boards know that that's a very unhealthy thing and so it's hard to actually perform research on that but um, some things we do know is there have been uh, relatively short-term studies but long enough to get a good idea of what's going on looking at um, short sleep versus normal amounts of sleep uh, on body composition um, in a calorie deficit and they find that uh, when you're sleeping less you lose the same amount of actual weight is when you're sleeping more when diet is controlled but more of that weight lost is lean mass and less of it is fat mass so that's no good um, and then in terms of population-wide studies people who sleep less um, tend to have more body fat higher BMI's worse health outcomes um, so that would probably primarily apply to a calorie surplus or at maintenance so yeah short answer there if you're sleeping less than at least seven and a half hours per night, you're probably going to benefit a lot, like a very meaningful amount by, you know, trying to get, you know, trying to get in bed at least eight hours per night or so. Uh, the more interesting question is, are there additional benefits on top of that to sleeping more than eight hours per night? Um, and this, it doesn't have quite as much research to this point. Uh, and for a long time, people recommended against this, even for healthy athletes, um, because there is some population epi epidemiological research uh, showing that people who sleep longer than about eight, eight and a half hours per night tend to have worse health outcomes than people who do sleep, kind of a more normal amount. Uh, but that very well... Uh, could be and probably is a case of mistake and causality. So it's not necessarily that sleeping more is bad for you. Um, what's probably going on there is people who are already unhealthy are fatigued and need to sleep more. Um, or don't have jobs and are less busy and can sleep more. And that's also associated generally with worse life outcomes in general. So um, that's, that's a concern a lot of people have. I think that that is probably just a case of mistaken causality there, just assuming correlation uh, is causation when it's actually not. Now, in terms of actual controlled research done on sleep extension, there's not too much at this point. Uh, most of it is coming out of Sherry Ma's lab at Stanford University. And uh, I will just admit on the front end, it's they haven't looked at anything um, having to do with strength, hypertrophy, powerlifting, bodybuilding, anything like that to this point. Um, it's been looking primarily at, you know, other athletes, um, you know, the, the types of sports that more people in the world care about, uh, just being frank about it. Um, so they've looked at tennis, swimming, basketball, and I think football. Um, but I, I know tennis, swimming, and basketball. And so they've looked at some stuff that would primarily be associated more with focus and mental performance. Um, so, you know, free throw shooting accuracy, three-point shooting accuracy, uh, serve accuracy and return accuracy in tennis. But they have also looked at just more pure performance-based things. So for the basketball players, sprint times. For the swimmers, uh, sprint times over fairly short distances. And they found man, I wish I would have got the exact numbers, but pretty dramatic improvements. So we're talking, I think, like 5 to 8% uh, decreases in sprint times on average, which uh, if, you've ever looked, if you've ever worked with athletes where sprint times are important, that's a huge drop. Like, that's the type of drop that you'd be looking at um, for maybe like a six-month to a year-long uh, training cycle. And we're talking... Uh, those are the benefits associated with about two weeks of sleep extension. So having them go from sleeping about eight hours per night to nine to ten hours per night. Um, so, like, you can't draw a straight line between sprint times and your lifts in the gym or hypertrophy. Um, I'm not claiming that for a moment, but I am saying that, you know, sprint times, that's primarily power output, that is closely associated with force output. Um, you're just generally less mentally fatigued, so you will probably be able to train harder, recover faster. So um, in general, I definitely think to this point, the research is leaning towards if you can sleep nine to 10 hours per night, if you have time for that in your schedule, um, you will probably get additional, maybe substantial benefits uh, from sleeping an extra hour or two per night, 
even if you're already sleeping a normal amount, seven and a half, eight hours per night typically. So uh, that is the video. If you're sleeping five, six hours per night now and you feel like garbage, you're probably not one of those lucky fast sleepers. Definitely sleep more. If you can, make time in your schedule, get in bed an extra hour or two per night. That is going to pay big dividends for you. If you're already sleeping seven and a half, eight hours per night uh, and you're training hard, you will probably also get some benefits from sleeping an extra hour or so if you can fit that into your schedule. Um, but it, it's probably not going to be a night and day difference. So, uh, you know, don't freak yourself out if, if that's just not possible for you. But if it is, it is definitely worth a shot over two or three weeks. Just see if it makes a difference for you. Um, just for myself, it's something that I... I believe strongly in just from my experiences with it. Um, I do typically sleep about seven to eight hours per night, but um, the two best training blocks I've had uh, since just my initial noob gains, freaking a decade ago when I started training or whatever, um, since that point, uh, the two best training cycles I've had once I've already been uh, in, a, in a well-trained state were two periods of my life when I did have just fewer responsibilities and I could get in bed um, an average of about eight and a half to ten hours per night uh, depending on on the night of the week um, and that that did make at least for me anecdotally a big difference in terms of my results how quickly I gained strength and how well I recovered from training so uh, if that's something that you do have room in your schedule to uh, to give a try um, I think it's I think it's definitely uh, worth a crack if you can. Um, this was a little bit more of a rambly video than normal. Uh, sleep is something that I tend to get pretty passionate about. One of the few topics that I do get uh, really preachy about because I do think it is uh, very very important, and a lot of times it, its importance is understated and it's not talked about as much because you know sleep's not as sexy as something like a cool training program, new diet idea, supplement, whatever. So I feel like it doesn't get as much love as it should, but it is a very, very important topic. And, you know, you should try to sleep probably about as much as you can, as much as your schedule allows. So that is the video. Uh, if you liked it, please like and subscribe. And if you have a question you want answered, ask it in the comments below. And if it is my favorite, I will pick it and answer it in that next video. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, uh, hope your training's great, hope you have a great weekend, and I will see you in that next video.